Hello my friends, Stable Diffusion is the topic today and I'll show you how to install Stable Diffusion, how to download certain models from the internet, from Civitai specifically, and then how to run it and how to actually learn how to use this tool because it's a powerful tool. It's way better than just using Midjourney or Leonardo, you know. All of this is on your local area and you have these nodes and you can control a lot of things and of course you can make money with this simply because we're at the beginning of AI technology and all of that and this can be fun as well and yeah if you're an artist you're probably gonna have an easier time in understanding the language that comfy UI is using so let's just start with it to get comfy UI you can just Google for it like this so it is comfy UI and most probably it's just gonna give you this on github you can click on it and then it'll open this don't worry if this sounds or looks to you like too complicated it's actually not and i'll give you some resources for you to test them out and to learn actually so what do you have to do as you can see when i'm scrolling down you have this installing comfy ui and this is a direct link to download. So there is no repositories, there's no like Git, whatever, you don't have to do a lot. Just click on direct link to download. And then you are gonna get this. This is a zip file. You can open it up with 7-zip or WinRAR, whatever you want to do. And you can just get this here. So this is what you get at the beginning. First of all, you have to check whether you have NVIDIA GPU or you don't have an NVIDIA GPU. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, you just have to click on this and it'll open up in your browser. Now, if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, you have to run this one. It'll be slower, right? Because it's gonna be run by CPU, by your CPU, but it's still doable. You can still use it. Now, if you click on any one of these, I'll just use this one because I have an NVIDIA GPU. This is what you're gonna see on your screen. And then it's gonna open up this interface, the Comfy UI interface. So first of all, you see all these little things and they're called nodes, right? And you can see they're all connected. Now, the first one is the load checkpoint. And here is where you put the model. The model, as you can see here, First of all, this node is connected to the model in your k sampler. k sampler is something that makes your picture. Let me just drag this so you can see. Yeah, you can see that this model has been connected with this dot to this dot. All right. So let me just bring this back. So here is the place where you choose the model. Now to find the models, you can simply go over to Civitai. You've probably heard about Civitai. This is a place where a lot of people hang around and they just post their, you know, works. You can search for models inside of this tab right here. So models, and you can choose any one of these. I'll just use this one. It's called Juggernaut XL. It's one of the most popular ones. All you have to do is to click on the download button here. Then you're gonna get it like this, these three files. This is save tensor. Sometimes you're gonna get one, sometimes you're gonna get two, sometimes you're gonna get three or more. So now what you have to do, just move all of these three to this folder here, which you've gotten when you exported this one. So let's just go inside of this one. Let's just go to comfy UI and then you have to go to your models here. So the models also has many of these, but don't worry, just head over to the first one. It's checkpoints. And inside of checkpoints, you just paste your model, whichever one you've downloaded. Now I will run it again because you have to run it again whenever you add something new. And now we go back to the interface here. As you can see now, I've got two of these models. The first one, the second one, and it doesn't matter whichever amount of these models you have, they're all going to list here. So I'll just use this jogger now. now. And first of all, after the load checkpoint, you have to take care of these clips, or this is just the prompt, right? As you can see, one of these is going to the first one and then to the second one. This is basically the prompt. Right, so this is the positive prompt. You can rename this, as you can see, double click on it and you can just click on positive prompt and down there you can double click on this one and you can just name this one the negative one, right? It's good to do this if you're just starting out, 
But if you forget, if you, for example, like move these around and you don't know what happened to your prompt, where's the negative, where's this one, you can see here in the case sampler that the negative one is connected to this one. So you will always know that this is the negative one, right? You can change these, like for example, move these around, connect them somewhere else, but I don't suggest you do that right now. And you can see that the positive one has been connected to this one. So I'll just use it like this. So let me just grab this and make it like this. And the last one from the low checkpoint is VAE, and it is going to this VAE decode. This is essentially what makes you the image later on. And on this one, the K sampler, you can see that you've got the seed number, you've got control after generate, you've got number of steps that you want it to go through, and then you've got this CFG. Now, this is maybe the most important one. I use this one around five to six, sometimes seven. This is like the more you go, the more you increase the amount of this number, well, the more the sampler is going to listen to your prompt. The lesser the number, well, the more creative it's just going to allow itself to be. All right. Now, the sampler name, I usually use this one, this one, DPMPP2M, and then I just use the scheduler, which is Keras. And let me just show you how this works. So you got this default prompt here. So beautiful scenery, nature, glass bottle, landscape, purple galaxy bottle. You've got the negative prompt. You don't want text or watermarks in it. That's what negative prompt means in a nutshell. Here you just put the things that you don't want to see in an image. And then just click on Q prompt here. And then of course, it's just gonna render all of that. As you can see, you can see the process right here. And you've got this one. Right now, this is just an image. Let me just open this image. It's going to open up in a new window. This is like 512 by 512. This is a small image, but that's why this node is for. This is empty latent image. You can choose the width and the length of an image by just typing it here. So let's just go with 1024. Click on OK here. Then just do the same thing. 1024. Click on OK. And the batch size, well, this just tells you how many of these pictures you want to be generated. Just click on Cupron once more. This all stay the same. Now you just wait it out. Your GPU or your CPU is going to do the work. And there you have it. This is now my bottle. I can just open the image. Now I've got a bigger image. And in a nutshell, this is how it works. Now, the best way, the best feature to learn how to use this one correctly, how to practice with this one, because practice is going to be the most important part. Take any picture from Civitai. It's good that if you use the models that you have available on your computer, such as this image, you can right click on it, you can save image as on your computer, and then in your interface, you can just drag and drop this image. All right. And what is beautiful about this one, you get the entire workflow that this person was using when it made that image, when he or she made that image, right? So you've got the models, you've got everything loaded out, you've got every one of these nodes, and I'll tell you how to get all of these nodes later on, but you get the entire workflow that this person used in order to generate that image. And if I click on Qprom now, I'll get some errors because I miss some nodes and I miss some models. Now, the models can be made here, right? You just choose another one. Then I just queue the prompt once more and then I will just wait for it to be done. But if you want to get all the nodes, if you miss something, you can just use Comfy UI Manager. Now, Comfy UI Manager, you can just find it here on GitHub as well. It'll do all the work for you. You can just scroll down, you can see what it does it can install missing custom nodes. So when you put the image inside of your comfy UI, you can immediately install all that is missing for you, right? Let me just show you how that works. Just download the manager from here. And then this is how the manager is going to look like. You're going to cut this or copy it, head over to your comfy UI, paste it here, and then just run it. All right. And then you just have to reset the comfy UI. So just run it one more time. And then you'll have your manager inside of this one as well. Now, how to learn even more? Just head over to Google. Comfy UI examples. 
All right, this is what you have to click on. And this is gonna get you here, where you can find a lot of these things that'll teach you, for example, how to in-paint in an image, right? So they'll just show you, for example, just have a look at this one. I'll just open it up. Let's just open this like this. And let's just increase the size of it. So for example, you have the picture. It's just like some mountains, whatever, and you wanna put a cat in it. So you choose the model, then you just make the prompt for the cat. And then you're gonna use this node as well, which you will add on top of it. And then you wanna just in paint, where do you want that cat to be? And this is essentially the result. Let me just go show you. So there's a cat in front of this, on this place, on this place where you painted it. You have it on the official GitHub Comfy UI. You can just go down there. And instead of installing, you've got Comfy UI examples and you're gonna get a lot of these things. Now, there's this here. Let me just increase the size of it. Comfy UI basic tutorial. This is the best piece of advice that I can give you right now. If you're just beginning, this is like something like an anime, like a cartoon, whatever. And you can learn from this one like a lot, all right? So it's like a classroom and everything inside of this one has been made with Stable Diffusion and they will just teach you what are the prompts, how to use the prompts, what are some of the features and yeah, essentially you just have to practice and this is gonna allow you that place to practice with. And I really can tell you how many of these options are there in order to make money with this one. From the companies that want their logos, nowadays you can just write the text with it if you use the Flux model and there's a lot of people online that just wanna get these images for their products, for their Instagram, for fun, whatever. This is just the beginning. And if you learn how to use this tool, you will have an easier time to learn all the others that'll come after this. Because as I've told you, it's just getting started. And if you have some kind of passion for this one, if it's interesting to you, you can open yourself up to a lot of possibilities online. You can't quit your job still. This is still a side hustle, but trust me, it has a lot of potential. So yeah, go and learn the thing. I wish you good luck.